football has a funny way of hiding its most successful players at the most important position. When studying the backstories of every great quarterback in the league, almost all of them either weren't heavily recruited, didn't have elite college production, or at least didn't show it until their very last season. It's rare to get those Peyton Manning, Andrew Luck type players who dominated year in, year out, then actually reached their lofty potential in the NFL. Big school, small school, that doesn't really matter at the next level. What does matter is if you have high-end traits and can match that with high-end production, even if it's just for one year. BYU's Zach Wilson is the latest quarterback prospect who wasn't producing, wasn't at a traditional football powerhouse, but in his final season shot himself out of a cannon to the top of every mock draft. He was merely an average quarterback on an average team in his first two seasons at BYU. But in 2020, this man exploded and even forced some to question whether he's QB1 over Trevor Lawrence. This past year, Wilson's completion percentage jumped from 62% to 73. He threw for 3,700 yards, 33 touchdowns, plus 10 more on the ground, and had just three interceptions. Those are some crazy good numbers, but we've certainly seen plenty of college quarterbacks rack up empty statistics that don't translate whatsoever to the NFL. Yes, good numbers are important, but what pro scouting departments really care about are your traits. And Zach Wilson checks off every last trait in the book. When studying him on film, it's unmistakable he has all the physical and mental intangibles you could ask for. He has incredible arm strength paired with incredible accuracy. He's not afraid to get hit in the pocket, anticipates open receivers rather than waiting to see them come open, is tough, fearless, always in attack mode, and very, very aggressive. When you picture a typical college offense, you usually think of spreading the field and wide open receivers, but that's not at all how Wilson operates. Whether he's in the pocket or on the run, he's straight up the best contested ball thrower I've ever charted and routinely seeks one-on-one -on -one matchups 30 to 60 yards down the field with literally perfect accuracy. He can throw from anywhere to anyone, from any platform at any moment, and it's certainly not just to open receivers. I like to call him the nap hunter, and no, not because he puts the defense to sleep or some cheesy crap like that, but because of his ability to attack non-aggressive players or naps on defense. When a nap defender has their back turned to the quarterback, they can't see the pass coming, so they can't be aggressive to the ball or cover much space. And when Wilson identifies that, he bombs away down the field every single time. The nap hunter is not somebody to mess around with up the sidelines. But of course, the NFL isn't just your ability to throw contested balls outside the numbers, but what you do inside of them is really where you make your chicken. The core makeup of BYU's offensive system is a concoction of Kyle Shanahan's mid-zone, wide-zone run scheme with all the play-action bootlegs, blended with several classic air raid principles. BYU based out of their own version of Shanahan's offense, but also mixed in a ton of mesh, which is one of the staples of the OG air raid system, and Wilson dominated when it was called. Take this example against Houston, where BYU's winning by three in the fourth quarter with four minutes remaining. Mesh is two shallow crosses which overlap close enough to touch hands and a sit route up the middle. Chip Kelly popularized the running back wheel route out of the backfield, which is how BYU does it, and then teams vary with how they deploy their fifth receiver. Mesh is very difficult for defenses to stop because it can be effective against man or zone, and Houston's defense clearly game plan multiple coverages during the week to shut it down. They're running a man-cover-two zone combination where the top plays cover two and the bottom plays man. And if this receiver goes underneath, the backside safety will come down to cut the shallow to try and bait Wilson into throwing it. The coverage really has answers for everything, but Wilson's ability to improvise within the pocket and by time creates an opportunity for him to hit his receiver sliding open. The first thing he sees is this safety dropping back on the zone side of the coverage. So Wilson turns his attention to the mesh routes in case the underneath defenders lose their positioning. When he sees zone, he anticipates mesh coming open, but when he feels that safety flying down to cut the shallow, his attention turns to the open middle of the field to the sit route, but starts getting pressure off the edge. Instead of escaping, he slides in the pocket and executes a low swipe to protect the ball, keeps his eyes downfield, and sees his receiver adjust towards open space and creates a big play to move the offense into the red zone. 
So now on the next play, we're on the 13-yard line, but instead of running the ball or getting conservative to drain the clock, they call Mesh again to try and win the game. It's the same concept, but as we said before, the fifth receiver's route is interchangeable. Houston's running another man-cover two zone combo, but have quickly adjusted to what just happened the play before. Instead of the safeties cutting one of the shallows, the linebacker's covering the weak mesh route and this safety's accounting for the sit, so he can't sneak behind the coverage like he did a sec ago. Wilson knows if he can move that safety just one step inside, that'll open the window for the skinny post. He manipulates the safety and throws a rope that gets dropped. The ability to quickly decipher which defender you have to manipulate is crucial. And then the next level is actually using your eyes to get him off the spot you want to throw to. Wilson quickly opens to his right and sees the linebacker clear out with the running back. When he sees the corners in man, he knows he needs to get this safety out of the post window. Watch his eyes and body manipulate the safety inside, then instantly come back to dot up the receiver, which would have won them the game. But that didn't stop Wilson. After an incomplete pass and a false start, it's 3rd and 15, but BYU's still in field goal range to go up 6. When Wilson gets the clear man indicator pre-snap, with the game on the line, he goes nap hunting. The moment he sees the defender's back, look at the throw he makes to put BYU up 10 to ice the game. One of the things I'm looking for when evaluating a quarterback is how that prospect adapts and reacts when they run the same concept multiple times. If whoever you're charting hits the same shallow route and mesh a hundred times in a row and isn't adjusting to different defenses and coverages, that can be a red flag. But if he's actually processing the defense, actually making progressions to find the right receiver each time, that's what earns the player a high grade. Here's Mesh again, but now with a corner route from the fifth receiver. When everyone's all covered up, Wilson escapes the pocket, finds the nap defender, and on the run throws it 45 plus back shoulder, placing it where only his guy can get it. Making these types of throws when you can't drive the ball with your lower half is a clear indication of just how powerful Wilson's arm is, and he's often more accurate on throws 40 yards down the field than most QBs are on just 10. When he is able to get his feet in the ground, he can consistently manipulate defenders with his eyes. And that's not just on underneath style concepts, but deep shots as well. Especially when using play action, another staple of the Shanahan system, Wilson can use his eyes to move safeties out of the way, then capitalize with his arm strength. Shanahan's been running this flood, slide Yankee concept for years, which has a deep post or corner route with an intermediate deep cross and then a receiver underneath in the flat. The concept's designed to high-low the deep middle of the field safety in one-high coverages. Since both receivers have inside leverage on their defenders to the post, the safety has to choose one to cover, and the quarterback's job is to punish that choice. When the safety takes the deep crosser, Wilson has the arm strength and pinpoint accuracy to make him pay every time, and is able to take advantage of the window he created. He already sees the deep safety is pretty low at the snap, so he'll likely have the deep post open. To make sure the safety isn't dropping deep, watch how he gives the smallest look to his right. And despite the linebacker coming free up the middle, he doesn't hesitate or flinch and drives the ball down the field directly into his receiver's hands. Wilson's able to buy time in the pocket or use his legs when he doesn't have a clear read on the concept, and when the safety even plays it kind of in between and makes it hard for him to determine his read, he can extend the play, throw on the run, and hit the shot 55 yards downfield even though his receiver drops it. While I was charting him, I was surprised by his natural, fluid throwing motion and playmaking ability, but he's certainly more of a project compared to a Trevor Lawrence or a Justin Fields. He loves to throw the contested balls outside as we've seen, and those are super impressive, but there are times when he's shown a blind spot over the middle of the field, which raises questions about his post-snap processing and how well he's actually seeing things in that area. His footwork is kind of Mahomesian, since their styles are similar, and when Pat was coming out of Texas Tech back in 2017, that inconsistent footwork's mainly what scared off a ton of people, but obviously Mahomes worked out, and Wilson's gonna have similar question marks just like he did. When Wilson's footwork does get really sloppy, his mechanics break down and can muddy up his process, making throws more difficult than they really should have been in the first place. He completes this pass, but watch how his feet aren't synced up with what he's seeing, and he's falling backwards as he throws, for no reason. 
Don't get me wrong, no quarterback prospect is perfect, and these issues are certainly ones that can be cleaned up compared to some of the other guys' problems in this draft class. The positives Wilson has over them? He is so ridiculously gifted, he could certainly carry an average NFL roster if he hits. He's not a safe quarterback, but teams don't win in the NFL being safe. He's the guy who can make throws only the 1% of the 1% would even dare attempt. Yes, he's more of a projection based on how raw he is right now, but you watch some of these throws and try and tell me you don't want this guy on your team. Zach Wilson has seemingly come out of nowhere, but is the exact type of quarterback the NFL has been trending towards for years. Yeah, he's had just one year of production, but look at his traits. He has mobility. He can extend the play. His arm talent is freakish. You want potential? A savior? A franchise quarterback? Draft Zach Wilson. Wilson.